Welcome to Aorint channel and welcome back to surface modeling course. In the last video, we introduced the boundary surface feature and we start making a nozzle for a vacuum cleaner. In this one, we are going to develop it further using various techniques and we are going to have a look at the offset surface tool. This was how we left the model. So it looks okay, but let's say actually we want a curve on the top here, maybe just to help us get right into the edges when vacuuming. Let's trim away the top using another surface. So let's start a sketch on the front plane. And first let's draw a vertical center line from the origin at the bottom all the way to the top of the bar, just so we can line everything up. Then next, let's get the arc tool and draw a three-point arc like this. So starting on the left and going over to the right. Let's select the midpoint by right-clicking and pressing select midpoint. And then make that coincident with the top of the center line. Then let's select the left and right points of the arc and also the center line and make those symmetrical and then we can set the width as 80 millimeters. And then finally, let's put the height here as 8 millimeters. So we should have a fully defined arc like this. If ours aren't fully defined, just make sure we've got the symmetrical relation on there between the two ends of the arc. We can then use this arc to create an extruded surface. So let's go to the surfaces tab and press extruded surface. And let's do a mid plane extrude. And we'll go upwards so we cover the whole nozzle and let's say make it 50 millimeters. So now we've got a new curved surface at the top, which basically goes right up to the edge of the bar there. We can use this to trim the top of the first surface. So let's go to surfaces, trim surface, make sure we're on the standard option and then let's choose the extruded surface at the trim tool here and make sure we're on remove selections. And let's just choose those two regions to remove there and press OK. And we've now removed those and we've got a nice curved edge on the top there. We don't need this curved surface anymore, so we could just hover over it and press tab to hide it. But instead, what I'm gonna do is delete it. To do that, we can go up to the search box up here. We can start to type delete and we'll choose delete slash keep body. Remember, this is a surface body, so we need to use this tool. So let's open that tool and make sure we're on the delete body option. Then just choose that curved surface and press OK. And that should now be deleted and we've got that nice smooth curve on the top. So to create this curve like we just did, we could either trim it like we just did or we could have just drawn it curve in the first place. To do this, we could have used the project curve option. This is on the features tab and it's under the curves drop down. So there is project curve and I'll just quickly show us how we could have used this. So we could choose project curve, we could choose the sketch on sketch option. And for the inputs, we'll use the initial oval shape profile that we first drew. And for the second one, we'll use that curved arc we just used to make the extruded surface that we used for trimming. So if we were to use both of those sketches together, we would have created a curve like this yellow preview. You see exactly lines up with the part that we've cut anyway but we could have used that curve with the boundary surface to make the shape in the first place instead of using the arc afterwards to trim away. It would give the same end result. So I just wanted to show us two different ways we could do the same thing there. Now that we've got this surface, we can thicken it using the thicken feature. So this is on the surfaces tab. Let's choose that. Let's select the surface. Set select the surface, set the thickness as one millimeter and let's thicken it on both sides and press OK. So now we've got that solid with a uniform 1mm wall thickness all the way through. Now we're going to have a look at the offset surfaces tool. So imagine we were suddenly told actually we want the inside diameter of this nozzle to be smaller. Maybe the tube that fits on has changed size. But we only want to make it smaller at the end. We want the rest of the nozzle on the inside to stay as it is. We can use the offset surface tool to do this. First, let's split up the inside face of this nozzle so we can just offset the section that we want. So start to sketch on the front plane and then draw a center line upwards from the origin. And from that center line, let's do a horizontal midpoint line. We can find the midpoint line by going to the drop down next to the line tool here and choose midpoint. We'll start at the top of that center line and we'll go out to the left. And we can see as we do, it also goes out to the right. So let's make that line 50 millimeters wide. And let's set as 20 millimeters above the origin. So in terms of the position, it's just above the area where the nozzle starts to curve. 
we can then use this line to split up the inside face. So if you remember, we'll go to Features, Curve, Split Line. We'll choose the projection option. And then for the selection, let's choose that straight line that we just drew. And then for the surface, let's choose that inside surface. Then press OK. And now we've split that inside surface into two smaller phases. We can use one of these phases with the offset tool. So let's go to the surfaces tab. Choose the offset tool, which is here. It's a very simple tool. All we need to do is select the face that we want to offset and select the amount. So let's choose that inside face and set one millimeter. And let's offset inwards. If you do need to reverse the direction of the offset, we can just click this little button here. So let's offset one millimeter inwards and press OK to make that new surface. So we now have a new surface inside there that's one millimeter away from the other inside face. And if we wanted to, we can now use thicken with this. So to show this, let's go to the surface, thicken. Let's choose that new face that we just created. Let's take in one millimeter. And this time we'll go outwards. Like this. So it's basically kind of filling that gap between the offset surface and the main surface that we initially used. Let's also put a tick in the merge result box here. And what that means is, when we create the new solid, it will be merged with any other solid that it touches. So it will merge with that main outer solid. So let's press OK. Now we can see we've just got one single solid body in the model. And that thicker section at the bottom with a smaller diameter is also an integral part of the model. If we hadn't checked that merge result box, I'll just show us. So if I edit it and uncheck it, we can now see we've got two solid bodies. And potentially we could join these using the combine feature. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. There's also almost like a hidden function of the offset surface. And we'll look at that now. So firstly, I'm just going to delete those last two features, the offset and the thicken. So I'm going to select them and press delete. So we just have the basic shape of the nozzle. So we now want to achieve basically the same thing as we just did in a slightly different way. So we want to make that inner diameter smaller. I'm going to go to the surface tab and I'm going to choose offset surface again. When we open it, we'll notice up here it says offset surface. If we change the offset amount to zero, the text up there changes the copy surface. So we see if we have say one millimeter, it says offset surface. If we have zero, so no offset, it changes to copy surface. So we'll keep the distance at zero. We'll choose the inside face again and then we'll press OK. And if we look in the graphics area, maybe it doesn't really look like anything has happened. We've got this slightly dotted edge around, but actually we have added a new surface in. If we hide the main solid body, so I'm gonna hover over it and press Tab key to hide it, we can see that what we've got left is that surface body inside there. And that's exactly the same as that inside face of the body that we just hit. So this feature copying the surface can be really useful if we wanna use a surface from a solid and then use that for some kind of surface operation. So we could now maybe use this surface and thicken it inwards. But we could also do something like this. I'm going to hide that solid body again, and then I'm going to select the offset tool again. Select the surface that we just made, and this time offset 1mm inwards, like this, and press OK. And now we have two parallel surfaces, almost like rings. One of them is slightly smaller than the other one, and it's offset 1mm in all the way around. So we've got this small 1mm gap between them. And we can fill that gap using something like a ruled surface. Let's go to surfaces and select ruled surface. And then in the selection box, I'm going to choose this inside edge on the bottom. And also the inside edge on the top. For the option, let's use normal to surface. Let's set the distance as 1mm. And then if we need to, let's just reverse the direction. So we're filling in that little gap between the two parallel surfaces. So it should look something like this. We don't need any of these options down here selected, so if they've been checked, just uncheck both of those and then press OK. And then we've created those two new surfaces. We can then knit these four surfaces all together, and we can create a solid from them. Let's go to the surface tab and choose knit surface, and select all four of those surfaces. And put a tick in the create solid box and press OK. And we've now created a solid using all those four surfaces. And if I reshow the main body, we can see we've basically created the same inner ring there. We've just done it in a slightly different way. These bodies are also now two separate bodies, but we can combine them using the combine tool. We can go up to the search bar in the top right and start to type in combine, C-O-M-B. 
and there is combine. Open that tool. Make sure we're on the add option. And then just select the two solid bodies and press OK. And now they've been merged into one single solid body. So that's the nozzle completed. It's quite a simple part. To recap this video, first we practiced trimming by making an extruded surface and then using that with the trim surfaces tool. We could also have used the project curve option to make a profile that was curved in the first place and we could have used that with the boundary surface tool. We then looked at the offset surfaces tool and as the name suggests, this can be used to offset surfaces. It can also be used to copy them if we set the offset distance to zero. And this could be useful if we need to duplicate a surface from a solid and then use that in a surfacing operation. So we looked at two different ways of creating that thickening section. The first was just by offsetting the surface and then thickening it. That's probably easier and faster. But we also looked at offsetting and copying two surfaces and then filling the cabin between them using some ruled surfaces. And then finally knitting all of those together and creating a solid which we then combined with the main solid. In the next section, we'll be practicing some more of these techniques by modeling up a spoon. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like. I hope it can be a little helpful and useful.